Okay, so obvious uh, crushed on me. So this is part two of our tutorial. Uh, so yeah, I left off showing you how to do the explosion. So we have uh, in part one, I showed you how to make the explosion. In part two, I'm just I just want to show you how to make the car deform after the on the impact of uh, the explosion. So you can see move forward. You can see it starts off as a clean car, and then it because of the explosion it starts deforming uh, that's what we're going to set up so let me talk about how i did that so i created this proxy mesh that wraps around uh, the chassis of the car and uh, this mesh here is used as a, a surface deformer object so basically what that that is is that uh, when i move when i change this mesh or when i deform this mesh uh, this also deforms that's the purpose of this uh, surface deformer and you can see if i move this closer to these, I just play for you. So when this defo is deformed by these meshes here, you can see when this uh, this mesh is deformed, uh, the the chassis or the car itself deforms, and uh, this bonnet also deforms, and uh, you can see everything deforms as well. So this surface here or this proxy is set up as a surface deformer using the surface deform modifier to bend the car itself the body of the car and uh, for it to deform i'm using these objects here or uh, these blobs here which are basically meshes uh, with a subdivision surface and uh, a displacement modifier to give them that uh, distorted uh, form and uh, then i use them as uh, dynamic painting brushes you can see the settings i have here paint uh, mesh volume plus plus proximity and what that does uh, because we have this object here this uh, proxy set as a canvas with a type of with a format of vertex and a surface type of weight paint again you can just watch the time lapse on my second channel blender uh, money uh, to watch the entire process how i set up everything but uh, i have tutorials on, on dynamic painting on this channel as well you can search for you can search on youtube for top channel as uh, dynamic painting you should find something uh, so yeah let me first show you how this is working. So if I go back to uh, text set mode and go to vertex weight, you can see that uh, these surfaces, when they come into proximity with this surface, we start to see some weight painting happening on this object. So now we're using that white weight painting or vertex group. So that weight painting is set to a vertex to this vertex group are you you said that all you said all that up in the in the dynamic painting uh, settings you can see the vertex group here so whatever uh vertex groups you say so sorry our uh, weight painting you you make are uh, they're saved within this vertex group here uh, that we're using in the displacement modifier so let me show you how that is working so Without this vertex group, we are painting with this. Uh, the displacement modifier just distorts everything on this car or on this uh, uh, modifier, on this uh, uh, proxy, which in turn deforms the car. Let me just turn this to wireframe. You can see it's deforming everything, uh, which right now doesn't seem to work very well. Oh, you're getting an error here, but uh, that's okay. But sometimes you get this error. I'm not sure why it's up, why the error is there, but uh, yeah. So now it's uh, it's working correctly. So this is you can see without the vertex group here, the entire car is being deformed. But because we have that vertex group, uh, which is uh, which is uh, influencing the uh, the uh, weight paint, when we set that up. The deformation is only happening where that uh, vertex group or weight paint is being painted and that because that weight painting is uh, painted only when this mesh comes into proximity with these blobs which are our dynamic painting brushes let's show you the distortion uh, if I can select this weight can see now 
those areas of the car are getting uh, deformed. So it starts off clean uh, because uh, the proxy mesh is f is a good distance away from the uh, from the from the other surfaces from the deformer surfaces. Some reason sometimes this doesn't really work. work. I think it could be a bug, but uh, let's uh, try doing this again. So it's uh, the explosion happens around here. And then you start to see those deformation and because this explodes up uh, it comes closer to this or into proximity with these blobs causing the deformation to happen there and uh, everything else here is uh, just some physics setup which is very easy to see if uh, if you watch the time lapse you can see how i set up that physics uh, because it's very simple and uh, maybe let me just go do an overview of that so to make this car flip i i have it set as a rigid body object of type uh, active and uh, I also have constraints set up uh, for the tires so we have these proxy tires that are parented that this objects are parent the, the actual tire, tires are parented to this here you can see in the time lapse how I set that up because uh, it's very basic and now uh, we have these constraints hinge constraints connected connecting the tire to the car so the car starts off sitting on the tires and uh, then the explosion happened and the way I set up the explosion I have this uh, rigid body object that I animate to expand for a few frames uh, which pushes uh, the car up you can see I have it as a type passive animated to allow for the keyframe animation then it pushes this up and then you can see this happening so so for the cost for this tire to break off i set up these constraints are uh, the constraint that links this tire to this tire to be breakable at a certain threshold uh, so because of the impact of the car on the surface that that threshold is hit and uh, that tire breaks off uh, you can do this for any other surface so for example i have a hinge constraint here connecting this door to the to this to the car to the rest of the car and uh, right now the threshold is stand really high but uh, if i turn it to something like a hundred we might see the same thing but i think i have this already i have the rigid body dynamics already baked and i don't want to do that again so yeah you can experiment with this again you can find the project on my pa patreon page if you want to uh watch that if you want to see that but uh i think for the most part uh, that's it. I've already talked about how I simulated uh, the fire and small Yeah, you might you can see I also have this object here, which is uh, Standing in place of of an engine. So what was happening when I was experimenting this is that uh, uh, Without this engine here uh, the car was light it wasn't heavy enough so when this tire uh, broke off broke off the car uh, there wasn't enough weight to make this uh, tilt this way because you this would, this is exactly this is exactly what you would imagine so because because of the engine here uh, then the center of gravity would be somewhere here pulling the car to bend at an angle like that but because I didn't have an engine in the car it was just leveling up in a straight way which wasn't very super realistic so what i did is i uh, added in that uh, this cube here gave it a, re uh, a high mass of 400 kilograms and uh, which is nearly half a ton so and then rigged it with a constraint that fixes it to this cast I, i'm not sure what where the constraint okay this is is constraint uh, a fixed con constraint uh, linking it to this car so it stays attached to the car and uh, that gave uh, the car enough weight to tip uh, let me just get my mm, yeah to tip of uh, to to tilt in a more realistic way when this 
uh, tire bounces off. Yeah, so basically that's it. I think I've touched on everything that uh, yeah is necessary. So let me just play for you the explosion one more time so that uh, you can see how that came out. You can see that. And uh, then from another angle. Yeah. Thank you for watching.